Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today I am out on a cattle ranch here in San Diego, one of the very few, if not the only, grass-fed cattle ranches here in the county. And it's run by our family friend John Ostell, who we've been buying meat from uh, from the last five or six years, I think, from the cattle that he's been raising on this property. So today we're gonna go and kind of see what his whole farm looks like. I think he's managing about 3,500 acres out here. And it's all on state land that he leases. And it's also, he's working in conjunction with NCRS uh, and other state agencies. Uh, this is part of an ecological preserve out here. And it's been pretty amazing because it took him about three or four years to actually lock down this property and to convince the government to do managed grazing out here. So it's been pretty amazing the results. Of course, we know uh, if you guys have studied regenerative agriculture and mob grazing and grass fed, uh, cattle raising, what that does to land, the uh, organic matter that creates, the amazing things that it does for the plants and the animals, and just uh, this really symbiotic relationship between uh, the entire eco ecosystem. So I'm excited to show you some of his great techniques and just show you a little bit more of what it looks like uh, to run a cattle ranch of about, I, th I think he's like 250 head of cattle. So I'm here with uh, John Ostell, uh, my local rancher actually, and Really excited to be out here today. And so, John, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into ranching and, and all about your operation here? Oh, okay, Stephen. Yeah, I've, uh, my name is uh, John Ostell. Like Stephen said, I'm the manager of uh, 4J Horse and Livestock here in San Diego County, East County. And uh, we have a natural grass fed, uh, 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 born and raised, and uh, from start to finish, basically, uh, a product that we, uh, sell to the local community um, through shares. Uh, the ranch uh, was started in 07. I have a background in animal science uh, with an animal science degree from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a minor in ag finance. <laughs> and uh, we're down here at our corrals. We're doing a, uh, a low stress weaning this year uh, our second year doing it where we put the calves in our corral and uh, wean them off their moms and the moms are surrounding the calves so they can come check on them but are not uh, uh, able to nurse. So it's going really well. As you can see, there's not a whole lot of noise uh, of them yelling or there's not a lot of stress that's happening uh, on the babies, which is a good thing. Uh, from our standpoint, the less stress, the better. Uh, we do everything with uh, when we move livestock and handle them. It's all low stress. Uh, cows move on their own. They, we don't have any hot shots. Uh, uh, if we have need a cow to move, we will twist her tail, but that's about <laughs> it. It's not really uh, just to make them uncomfortable. Uh, but 90% uh, of our cattle uh, are ranch raised. We retain our heifers. We're growing a little at a time on this property that we lease from the state of California. Um, and it's, uh, and it's, we've had wonderful uh, success through uh, just doing um, management of the property uh, through our managed grazing program uh, that has uh, worked real well for us. And uh, so you manage with the state this land. I know it's some. It's it's part of a fire protection, right? So that <laughs> wildfire is one of our target our target uh, items uh, through the winter months or growing season, which is October to Oc October first to uh, uh, mm. September thirtieth is our basic mm. growing season. <clears throat> That's our annual rainfall year, but our primary growing season is about three and a half, maybe four months uh, out of the year which starts in October, you know, but most of our rains come November, December, January. Uh, this year they came a little bit later and they came on strong. And uh, we had another, we've had two back-to-back -back years of uh, good rain. And as a result, we've got good feed, uh, which is a blessing to the, to the farmer or the rancher, but it's also a wildfire uh, management tool that we've got to kick in when it starts to go dormant like it is right now. So uh, what we do is we have a wildfire grazing program that we started with the CAL FIRE uh, basically uh, on a strategy on this particular ranch where we graze along the highways where most of the fires start uh, and then we work our way inward into the ranch. 
So uh, the primary areas that we start to really hit are along Highway 94, Hotel Lakes Road, uh, those areas that are where cars can have accidents or something happens and uh, as a, a wildfire can uh, be the result of that accident uh, or one of the repercussions of the accident. So um, that's, that's what we've done and that's what we are doing and it works real well. And, um, but more than anything, for the Department of California Wildlife, it's been a great tool for managing for uh, raptors uh, the big uh, item on this particular problem or the big species on here is burrowing owls. Uh, and we work with the state of California who works with the San Diego Zoo. And uh, we work to manage the burrowing owl habitats. And the burrowing owls go together and they follow the cows uh, when, they, when we rotate in each paddock, uh, which is pretty cool to see. So that's a, that's a big benefit. Yeah, you were telling me a lot of different species have come back to this land now after you've been managing it and the, store, the soil's being restored, uh, plant species are coming back. Yeah, the, our, uh, the, the wildlife we thought would take, when we first came on, it's been, the ranch was sitting dormant with no livestock on it since 1998. Uh, it had burnt twice already in two wildfires, so the range ground you know, type converted, they call it. The biologists say type converted, which means it's gone from a grassland to, you know, more weedy type of stuff, uh, which is what happens after fires. Uh, our earth wants to just get some kind of cover on it uh, naturally, so weeds are the start of that process. And then uh, it's taking us, uh, we thought it would take about two years for any type of result in a change in wildlife. It took almost eight, it just took only eight months before we started seeing a change in uh, patterns of uh, wildlife hunting on different uh, areas of our paddocks that we've cleared off a lot of the thatch and the growth uh, that's been there for years. And basically, you know, they start thriving out here and then the numbers of those type of species would increase. Uh, accordingly year after year. So that was uh, a pretty neat thing to watch and see, to be honest with you, yeah. And you're telling me uh, over here, there's, there's, you said there were some golden eagles over here? Yeah, on the, uh, on the rocks up there uh, on that mountain, the, uh, we've got golden <laughs> eagle nests. Yeah, and uh, they are uh, banded and they have the GPS trackers on them. Wow. But uh, when we, um, they would come down and start hunting down here on the flats. Wow. I've never seen an yeah. eagle in San Diego. They're so beautiful, they're incredible. huge. Yeah, there's actually quite a few golden eagle here in wow. San Diego County, and they're monitored closely. Um, so it's, um, but, and they're huge. They're just like a big 747 trying to get <laughs> off the ground out here sometimes, but it's really, it's neat to see. It's just as much enjoyment for us to see the wildlife out here along with our livestock, uh, you know. Uh, through a symbiotic relationship where everybody's, you know, getting along and, and, uh, and uh, thriving, so. Beautiful. Yeah. everywhere here in Southern California and uh, or in California alone but it's a real high protein grass that, that fillery. comes fillery yeah we're looking at 20 in the 20s as far as a percentage of protein and it's just a natural feed and it's a preferred feed so that's one of the things that grows as you can see it's down low so and we've got lots of grasshoppers see that all the grasshoppers oh Oh wow, yeah, there goes one. Okay, so watch, watch when I do this. See all the grasshoppers there? Oh wow. Those are, that's feed for our burrowing owls and other small uh, insects. Not everybody likes that. To me, uh, it does help our wildlife and it, it's not hurting anything that I've got going on this particular property from a reserve standpoint. Yeah. Uh, they're, you know, it's not like a locust thing. Uh, farmers don't like grasshoppers because they do eat their crops pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, for us, when we're on a wildlife uh, property and we're doing, you know, uh, stuff for our wildlife or grazing for wildlife management, then it's that's a that's a neat thing. So we got kestrels and uh, burrowing owls and great horned owls, all kinds of uh, different. You know, we have tricolored blackbirds. Uh, 
Uh, and the tricolored blackbirds just love uh, hanging around the cattle, uh, sit on their backs, you know, eating the bugs on their backs, you know, but they, they flock right around the cattle with ease. Oh, wow. And it's, that's a pretty neat thing. So they're, they're helping out the cattle. They are. Well, we're, they're doing both. It, it's a neat thing to see. That's what I'm saying. It's just, yeah. it's neat when they both go together and they're, they're symbiotic. And it's a relationship that through a management style of grazing that I think is, is going to be necessary for the future of ranching, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with the, you know, uh, younger generation, you know, kind of grasping it and understanding it. And it's not that much more work to do. Uh, it's a little change here or there, just being more uh, aware of your environment. So, um, and you get a better product at the end, the humans healthier, all the animals surrounding yeah, are healthier, happier. Yeah, we feel good about the whole thing. Yeah. You, yep. you just do. You're feeling you're you're producing a healthy product. It tastes good. You know, people want. Um, you know exactly what's put into that animal. That's the benefit of raising them, watching them being born, the raising them, and then finishing them on this property. Um, but you know, you are limited for you know on the amount of product you can produce. But the product that we do produce is pretty high quality oh, yeah. and uh, and tastes good, and the consumer wants it. So and that's. Uh, at least the consumers that we that we know. Uh. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we currently have a soil, uh, a carbon soil uh, uh, grant going through um, uh, RCD, our local RCD office, um, and we're excited about uh, initiating. We've been on here grazing for five years, but there's paddocks that we've started that haven't been grazed, so it's a ground ground zero uh you know stat that we can start uh we've got exclusion areas up, areas up mm -hmm. where they uh the cattle won't be grazing so we can uh, actually try to monitor to see how much uh, carbon uh, is being sequestered cool um and uh that's i'm excited about that program so yeah that's, that's a, really great that's and a neat deal the more yeah. carbon the more organic matter the more water the soil uh, the can more hold, yeah the, what's the happening the is get. yeah what happens is the more uh what we're discovering and this was uh through um rcd and uh the actually the peter donovan with the soil carbon coalition um, and um, uh, helped us understand this a little bit more along with Kent Reeves through the Rancher to Rancher program. But they were, um, they explained that the more carbon we stored in the soil, because our, our initial question was, why is this uh, areas that I had grazed and removed thatch and then rotated to another field, those areas that I just removed cattle from, the growth came back exponential the next year. And it was a deep, dark green uh, uh, vegetation that was growing. Whatever was growing, it was a deep, dark green vegetation. And it stood out substantially from the other paddocks that we had not grazed. And uh, so that happened the first year, the second year, not so much, but it was still deep, dark, and green. So I'm like, well, what's going on here? Um, and then they started talking about carbon uh, storage in the, in the ground and what it does, it's pulling the carbon out of the air, storing it in the ground, uh, turns the soil uh, a dark, you know, dark. Uh, it stores water in the soil. Uh, it helps with drought prevention. Uh, the more we do this, uh, lots of things were happening that we could see on the surface but didn't understand the science behind it. So that really kind of, you know, piqued our interest on the science behind it, like what's actually happening. Um, so uh, the ecosystems, what happened, they, the ecosystems on ranches or range ground that's sitting fallow or idle, they can actually stall or mm. just be, or limp along. So what happened was when we initiated our managed grazing program, we ended up jump-starting ecosystems. And when the ecosystem is healthy, you know, you get manure, you get cows, the vegetation is gone, the earth actually sees sun again, uh, and it jump starts this back, you know, all the good stuff that's in the soil to make it deep, dark, and, uh, and help store carbon on top of it. It just is a, it increases the quality of your feed like we were just talking about. Um, it also increases the, uh, the thickness or the amount of feed that you're getting which will increase my number of AUMs or animal units per month that I can run uh, through a managed program, along with providing some drought management 
uh, with the storing of the carbon. Uh, since it's the, the more carbon we store, the more moisture is in the ground. Uh, to a certain extent, it, it does provide some drought management techniques for us here in Southern California, which is what we're, we oh, yeah. get hit with. So um, wow. we were fortunate and, and blessed to have two good back-to-back -back rain years. Um, and uh, this is as a result of that. Uh, uh, we have a lot of moisture in the ground, a lot of groundwater. Um, so we're gonna enjoy it while we have it and still uh, continue our same practice and um, start doing our management for wildfire.